Drug excretion involves processes responsible for physically removing a drug out of the body. The main organs for excretion of the drug are the liver and the kidneys. Drugs entering the hepatic circulation may also enter the bile, which is then excreted into the duodenum and small intestine. Depending on the chemical properties of the drug, if the drug is not hydrophilic or polarized enough, it may then reabsorb from the small intestine back into the blood circulation. This is known as the enterohepatic recycling. The total medication clearance is described by the following equation. Where CLK reflects kidney clearance, CLH reflects hepatic clearance, CLP reflects pulmonary clearance if the drug is volatile and CL other integrates all other secondary sources of excretion such as breast milk, sweat, saliva and excretion via hair follicle. However, their contribution tends to be very small. Since kidney is the primary organ responsible for elimination of the drug, so in this video we will look into the excretion of the drugs through the kidneys only. If you haven't watched my previous videos on pharmacokinetics, please make sure to watch them first so that you have an in-depth understanding of today's topic. Before jumping into the mechanisms of drug clearance via the kidneys, let's have a one-minute recap of the structure of a single nephron, which is the functional unit of kidneys. So, this will be the structure of a single nephron from a pool of nephrons of the kidneys, comprising of Bowman's capsule which is the beginning part of the nephron and forms a cup-like sac surrounding the glomerulus. The glomerulus, which is the filtering unit of the kidney and is a specialized bundle of capillaries that are situated between two resistance vessels, the afferent and the efferent arterioles. Blood is infiltrated through the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule and is then passed through a series of channels named the proximal tubule the loop of Henle, which comprises of a descending and an ascending loop, and then the distal convoluted tubules, which end up into the collecting duct. Kidneys can only excrete water-soluble or hydrophilic and smaller compounds. The larger and more hydrophobic compounds are the responsibility of the liver to be excreted. Kidneys excrete a drug via three mechanisms. These are the drug excreted by the glomerular filtration, proximal tubular secretion, which is the active secretion of the drug from the blood into the proximal tubules, and then we have the distal tubular reabsorption, where the drug is reabsorbed back into the blood from distal convoluted tubules. Hence, the total renal drug clearance can be conceptualized by considering the following equation. Clearance in the renal tubules is equal to GFR or the glomerular filtration rate plus active tubular secretion and minus active tubular reabsorption. Let's talk about each one of them in some detail. So coming to the first mechanism of drug excretion which is the glomerular filtration, the normal GFR or the glomerular filtration rate is 120 ml per minute. Drugs which are free or not bound to albumin protein can pass through the Bowman space as part of the glomerular filtrate. The passage of the drug through the Bowman space is not influenced by the lipophilicity and pH. However, variations in GFR or protein binding of the drugs do affect this process. To simplify this, let's take a small section of the Bowman space and look at two scenarios. In the first scenario, suppose a patient has kidney disease. So, in such a patient, the albumin protein will be lost into the urine, making the free form of the drug more exposed to the Bowman space. Hence, the clearance rate of the drug will be increased. Same would be the case in a patient with cirrhosis of the liver. The liver won't be able to make enough of albumin protein and ultimately patient will have hypoalbuminemia which is a reduction in the albumin protein in the blood. This will in turn increase the filtration of the drug since the free form of the drug is increased. In both cases, the ratio of the free drug will be more than the binded form of the drug 
which in turn will cause an increase in clearance of the drug through the kidneys. In the second scenario, suppose we have a case where instead of hypoalbuminemia, someone has hyperalbuminemia, which may be the result of a high protein intake. The amount of binded form of the drug increases simultaneously and as long as the drug is in its binded form, it won't be able to filter through the Bowman space. Hence, clearance of the drug through the kidneys will be decreased. In short, the drug clearance through filtration can be highly affected by the protein binding capacity and the GFR. In the next mechanism, which is the proximal tubular secretion, if the drug has a high molecular weight, it cannot pass through the Bowman space. This causes the drug to leave the glomeruli through the efferent arteriole. The efferent arteriole forms a peritubular capillary network around the proximal tubule of a nephron, called the vesa recta, meaning the straight capillaries. But since this drug has a high molecular weight, the drug cannot secrete passively into the tubules out of the capillaries. The secretion of such a drug with a high molecular weight requires energy consumption in the form of ATP so that it actively secretes into the lumen against its concentration gradient. For this exact purpose, two transporters are present here, named as the organic anionic transporter and the organic cationic transporter. The organic anionic transporter actively secretes the deprotonated forms of weak acids while the organic cationic transporter is meant for active secretion of protonated forms of weak bases. Each of the transporters has low specificity, which means that in the presence of multiple drugs, these transporters can be saturated, inhibited, or maybe blocked. The third mechanism which plays its part in drug clearance is the distal tubular reabsorption. The concentration of the drug in the distal convoluted tubules will rise automatically following the process of filtration and secretion in the Bowman space and proximal tubules respectively. In the distal convoluted tubule, if the drug is charged and hydrophilic, although it's in a high concentration here, still it would be able to excrete out of the body through urine. However, if the drug is uncharged or non-polarized, and lipophilic, and moreover, it has a low molecular weight, it diffuses back into the circulation very easily and passively and is delivered to the liver for further processing, what we call phase 1 and phase 2 metabolism. In order to make the drug charged or ionized, or let's say hydrophilic enough for its excretion. This reabsorption of the drug in the distal convoluted tubule can be inhibited by manipulating pH of the urine in such a way that the ionized form of the drug for both a weak acidic or a weak basic drug is increased so that the reabsorption of the drug back into the blood could then be inhibited. Generally, weak acids can be eliminated by alkalinization of the urine whereas weak bases can be eliminated by the acidification of the urine. This process is termed iron trapping. So this was all about drug excretion. I hope this video helps. Please do subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell icon to get notifications on upcoming videos. In case you have got any questions about this video, you may write them down in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.